Since the Almighty God, by a sovereign decision, chose Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and destined that their descendants would give birth to a savior messiah who would destroy the devil's rule over the world, the descendants of this line chosen by God became the object of many attacks by the kingdoms of darkness to prevent the realization of God's plan for the salvation of the world. Throughout history, many enemies have emerged fighting Israel in all latitudes, but Amalek has become the embodiment of the evil and a gloomy eponym for the timeless spirit of hatred against the chosen people. The historic Amalekite people were lost in the depths of history as far back as antiquity, but their sinister name, their spirit of hatred, is doing well in our day. Today, it takes on the masks of new ideologies the enemy of Israel surprisingly successfully finds new hands and minds to plan and carry out another attempt to destroy God's elected people. Interestingly, the Amalekites do not appear in the biblical narrative as often as many of Israel's other enemies, nor do they have such spectacular campaigns as Babylon invading and destroying the kingdom of Judah or Assyria taking the ten northern tribes captive, or Rome drowning in the sea of blood the Jewish uprising and destroying the second temple in Jerusalem in AD 70. Before entering Canaan, God reminds the Israelites of an important point in their recent past. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt. How he met thee by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou wast faint and weary, and he feared not God. Therefore it shall be, when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. When the mighty armies of Pharaoh drowned in the waves in the spectacular act of God's salvation, the people of Israel breathed a sight of joy and marched through the Sinai desert towards the promised land. It is then that a new enemy attacks them, showing incomprehensible ruthlessness. This enemy is cunning and insidious, he deliberately uses the very difficult time and the unfavorable situation of the chosen people. This mode of operation is almost a showcase of Israel's enemies who act in the spirit of Amalek's hatred. We can imagine the scenery of this event. Jacob's descendants are already very tired and thirsty. They chase with the last of their strength, desperately looking for a place to rest. Gradually, the strongest, most persistent, armed move to the front of the column, and the weak, women and children, old men and the sick gather at the rear. Passing through Rephidim, they enter a stone bed of a dry stream, surrounded on all sides by high, steep rocks, almost obscuring the sky. And here, a sneaky attack takes place, not against the warriors leading the way, but against the weakest families in the rear. The slaughter begins, shameful, ruthless, motivated only by the desire to murder the entire nation. It was not Amalek's concern to prove his tribal superiority over another tribe, nor to defend the endangered territory, nor to negotiate, nor to provide free slave power, nor to pay tribute. Although, of course, the plundering of the property from the dead was welcome, their intention was to exterminate the Israelites completely, however shameful it might be. Worse. The Bible states that the founder of this clan, the Amalek, 
was one of the grandsons of Esau, the twin brother of Jacob. It is a painful tragedy of the human family that fits in with its drama in the first crime, Cain against Abel. And just like Cain, the murderer who brazenly states that he is not his brother's guardian, Amalek also shows no fear of God. Amalek's modus operandi is the deceitful and treacherous entanglement of Israel, is embodied in a searing hatred for all mankind, which is manifested by the serpent of the Garden of Eden, who knows that the chosen people, when they settle in the Promised Land, will be the heel of the Messiah who will be born and who will crush the head of his world domination. Moreover, causing the extermination of the chosen people would also mean wiping from the face of the earth the only messianic hope of humanity, our only chance for salvation. This is the worst reverse you can commit. Amalek actions are like mankind's hateful suicide. It is not only bringing suffering to the chosen people, but also the worst kind of betrayal of man against man. And let's remember this today. It is in modern times, in times of unprecedented technological progress and a heyday of civilization that the words people have prepared this fate for people were also spoken. The pagan seer Bileam, summoned by the king of Moab to curse the chosen people for the Moabites to win, is instead compelled by the god spirit to speak blessing over Jacob's tents, and curses fall on Israel's many enemies, including Amalek, of which Bileam says Amalek was the first of the nations, but his end was destruction. What does it mean that Amalek was the first of the nations? According to the rabbis, it is a negative sense. Amalek is the first of Israel's enemies. He is, in a way, enemy number one. Moreover, according to the rabbis, Amalek, while getting ready to deal with Israel in the Sinai desert, encouraged the participation of local peoples and clans in other words, he was the first to strive to build a coalition of nations hostile to Israel and he wanted to lead them. Amalek's method is to incite others, spread falsehood, lie to others about the Jewish people, infect others with anti-Semitism to incite jealousy, contempt, hatred and hostile action. This is how the rabbinical tradition reads the name symbolically. Amalek as a proper name has no specific meaning, but it resembles a bunch of words. Am meaning people and lek which means lick or suck. Amlek is a people who lick the blood of innocent victims, like a cannibal. Amalek also drains the soul from the people who work with him. Because this is how the hatred sown in them works, it eats them from the inside, drains their life, destroys their conscience, devastates, degradates and degenerates the essence of humanity. This is why God's commandment, which commands Israel, do not forget to erase his name, is addressed to all of us today. Erasing the memory of Mamalek is also the job of humanity, not just Israel. Erase the memory of Amalek can mean forget that Amalek even existed. But as long as it exists and brings the threat again and again, remember to strive to be able to forget about it. To forget Amalek also means do not let this terrible dehumanization of Amalek attacking the weak and the tired, women and children, let this hatred of him affect you. 
arousing fear and spreading anxiety in your soul. Forget Amalek, erase his name from your memory, all that characterizes him. Forgetting Amalek means first to break in one's own heart and conscience and renounce any covenant relationship with the spirit of Amalek's hatred. If necessary, turn away from the mistakes of your ancestors. Then you can try to erase his name from the memory of the world. At the same time, let us remember about the bond that should bind humanity with the Jewish people. Remember that the evil that Israel wants to destroy also turns against all who profess the name of the one God. Remember to forget Amalek also means actively remembering what God did to stop Amalek, that God is committed to the safety and salvation of his people. Remembering God's covenant promises and finding in them peace and trust, we forget Amalek, we deprive him of this power of fear over us. The most effective weapon in this fight was revealed to Israel at the first confrontation in Rephidim, giving him victory. This weapon is our hands, constantly and persistently raised to God, like the hands of Moses, supported by his fellow intercessors. We will not win this fight just in the order of this world. With our participation, heaven must invade earth and then the scales of victory will be waged. This is it for our today's episode. In our next episode on this topic, we will talk about something that happened on January 20. This is the date that marks the 18th anniversary of the disgraceful conference in Berlin's Vanes Villa, where contemporary Amalekites of the 20th century, high-ranked German officials of the Third Reich, coldly made administrative decisions that set the monstrous machine of the extermination of European Jews in motion. According to one fascinating hypothesis, the prophetic foreshadowing of these terrible events can be read from Queen Esther enigmatic words about the sons of Haman. If you're interested to listen to this, don't miss the next episode. Thank you for your attention. I hope the material we prepared for you today was something interesting for you. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to receive information about our next episodes. You can also support this channel by clicking on the main page, the joint button. That will help us greatly. Thank you very much. Have a good day and Shalom.